Hello, everybody. So in example 7.8, we're talking about something very similar to 7.7. .7. In this case, we have a loop. I'm going to show what's the difference at 7.7. .7, that has a B, a binary field, only inside the inside loop. And then we have the outside, which is just a ring. It's called a ring. The outside, just a ring. Oops, I should not done that. Okay, so it's a ring that is just free to rotate and do whatever it wants. So first of all, since we know that this is a chapter to find to do this format, we're gonna have to say that it's gonna equal to the E times DL. So again, again equals to negative D phi over DT and phi, sorry, not phi, uh, our flux is equals to the integral of b over dA, which in this case is equals to b times, uh, we're talking about the inside circle because we're talking about the area where the flux as, um, uh, where the flux is. So it's gonna be pi a squared. And then the, on the outside, we're talking about the ring. So we're gonna have e times pi b, sorry, 2 pi b. We're talking about the circumference of the ring. So it's equals to negative, then the derivative in terms of time of this part right here. Now we can start to find some stuff, for example, the pi. And we know that a is a constant, so we can just take it out of the derivative. So the uh, vector field is equals to negative a squared over 2b times the b dt. Now, one thing I want to notice is that at the beginning of the problem, b does not depend on t because it's, it's just a constant flux. However, at one point, the magnetic field is turned off. That means that we have a change in our magnetic field over time, which is can be like a milliseconds or anything. So we're going to have, anyway, a change of magnetic field. And therefore, a uh, change of magnetic flux. Okay, and now uh, we have to remember one thing. We're going to have that the torque, actually, I'll do one step before. The force that is on this, the initial force actually is equals to Q times E. Well, what is Q? Q is going to will be the linear charge density times the uh, circumference, which is, so we can say Q is equals to lambda times uh, 2 pi B. So again, our force will act on a loop Therefore, we have to find the torque, which can write which we write in T, or we can write as N, whatever you want, guys want to call it. So we're gonna have the oh, um, oh, one more thing that I forgot to mention is that the torque is actually yeah, no, actually the torque is equals to the radius times the force. So we find that the the force is equals to we said lambda 2 pi b times our electric field. And the radius instead is just simply equals to b, because we're talking about the outer radius. So we're gonna have b cross f. Now we're imagining that these two are perfectly perpendicular, so we can just say b times this part right here. Okay. And uh, of course, sorry, we're talking about E, which is a uh, oh, yeah, substitute RE. So we're going to have a B lambda 2 pi, actually B squared, and then the E, which is equals to negative A squared over 2B, and then the derivative of our B, capital B, for DT. So we can simplify this square with this B. And this two with this two. And then we get negative a squared b lambda pi and 
derivative of our magnetic field over time, which will be a vector. Anyway, uh, yes. Okay. And now we have to find the angular momentum. The angular momentum instead is what? Well, the angular momentum is the, oh, sorry, let's take a step forward, backward. So we know that the torque is equal to the angular momentum in the derivative of time. Therefore, the angular momentum is the integral of our uh, torque in terms of time. So it's equal to this part right here, we just said it's equal to the RA, and then derivative in terms of time. Now all of these are constants, so we're going to stick it out. So what are we left with inside the integral? Well, we're going to have our derivative of B in terms of T, t and then the integral of T. Now we can just say that these two cancel out very much, so the integral cancels out, and therefore it's going to be equal to negative A squared B lambda pi B. Now you're talking about B naught, so the initial uh, change. Oh, um, actually, you know what? Let me do a little something a little different. So we start from the initial moment is B naught, and the final moment will be zero, right? Because at the beginning, the value of B is B naught, and then the end will be zero. Therefore, this part here, this negative in front, goes away, and then we get a B naught. Okay, so it's one thing that you want to mention is that, as you can see, the angular momentum does not depend on time because, as you can see, we've got rid of the time part. However, it does depend on many other factors. So, if you, for example, turn off the um, magnetic field in one second, one millisecond, it would, does not matter. The angular momentum it will be the same. So, you can just take one second to turn it off, or you can just dim it slowly until you get to zero, and you will still get the same angular momentum uh, of the ring.